about why we think uh, people fail. Okay, why do people fail? Now, is it knowledge? You think it's knowledge mainly? Now, most people fail because they answer average questions wrong, not the hard questions. I already taught you that. Not so they fail because they missed an easy or average question. So that's why you have to know what most people know. And that's why I said before, a dental dex, if you're not taking a course. So we will make sure you know everything that other people know and more. Okay. Some people tend to like to learn things that are like, you know, hidden. That's not a good strategy because you want to make sure that if there's a question that everybody knows, you're on the team that people that you know it. Okay. Okay. You want to answer all the questions that other people are answering and you want to answer the questions that other people sometimes are not answering. So if you take this course and you work and study hard and put the effort, knowledge is not the reason you failed. Okay. If you don't take the course, yes, maybe it is. I can't, I don't know your situation then. Um, always have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset means I don't think I could change. I think I am born with my qualities. A growth mindset means I believe I, I, I'm born with certain qualities, but I could improve on them. So always don't say I'm bad with pharma. I'm bad with math. I'm bad with this. Believe that you could be improved if you want to, at least better than what you are yesterday. You could become better tomorrow, right? If you follow our methods and instructions, you will pass. Knowledge will not be the problem. So what are other things that may mess you up? Well, why do people mess up simple questions? I think it's these three. Okay, so I try to make some, it's first is fear and stress, confidence and expectations. So let's go through these because this will also be good for your orientation as well. Okay. So someone is asking about our YouTube channel. It's Scholars Dental, one word. So if you go to YouTube and you look up Scholars Dental, you'll find it. Okay. Now, fear and stress. You need the right amount of fear. So fear is help to motivate you, right? It pushes you toward, toward um, studying. So it's a good way. But too much of it will stress you out and block your clarity and judgment and studying ability and make you study in a bad way because you're always repeating the same concept. So how do you manage your fear? Well, think about, think of these concepts, keep these things in mind. We are all dentists. We are all scholars. That's a, <laughs> we want to enjoy learning the concept that our dental schools never taught. Look at it as an opportunity to learn now. So hopefully that reduces your fear. If you always think of it as a way to become the best dentist you can, it reduces the fear and anxiety. Change your mindset, learn in order to become the next generation of qualified dentists. Guys, this is on you now, right? The next generation of dentists, they're going to be, they're going to retire. It's on you to become that best dentist. You have to know how to diagnose endo, how, what drugs are allowed, how to, to do the proper anesthetics. You need to know the answers. So it's not just about the exam, but you're also, if you think about it, that you're going to have to hold this torch later on of dentistry. Um, Hopefully that makes it more enjoyable and less stressful. And also keep methods to relax, take breaks from studying, uh, family long walks, uh, you know, events. Life is more than just AFK. Uh, you are attending this session and that's it's on its own is an amazing first step toward being successful in this journey. Okay. There's a quote I read from a text, sorry, not a textbook, from a book, The Alchemist. Not sure if you guys know it, but the fear of suffering is usually or it's worse than the suffering itself. So your fear of actually uh, failing or being in the exam, that fear of what's to come is just, it's, it's um, the, the, that the suffer, the, the fear of it is worse. The fear of the failing is worse than failing. So when you do fail, you know, it's, it's something that happens. It's bad. It is suffering right? You, 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 it's painful, but you know, you know, a few days you'll, you'll get through it and then you'll go back to normal. And then you'll develop your next plan on what to do. The fear of suffering feels worse. That's that you always think it's something like really, really tragic and so hard. And, 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 and that fear it's unnecessary. You don't need it in your life. 
only a little bit to motivate you to, to, to study, but you, you have to try to get rid of it so that you could also be, uh, you know, have clarity to think. Um, uh, and then when it happens, you know, it's just a quote that helps me remember uh, when you're going through something uh, that you're afraid of. Confidence is another one. So confidence, um, confidence, you need the right amount of confidence. Okay. So what does that mean? Overconfidence creates ignorance. If I, I used to know someone I studied with that used to be like, no, that's it. I'm done. I, I read it once. But wait, like, don't you want to read? Like, that's it. Like, I'm not saying that, but like, sometimes they don't even review it at all, or that's it. Not, no strategy, right? So overconfidence that you just think you know everything, you're done, you'll forget more. Now, lack of confidence, here's the tricky one. People know this. People know overconfidence. Don't, you know, study, study. So don't be overconfident or, co or like egotistic about it. But people fall into this mistake. Why? Because they think this is good. This is a good thing. Overstudying. I believe there is such a thing. Okay. Lack of confidence makes you overstudy. And people think it doesn't matter if I overstudy. Overstudying is good. It's always good to overstudy. No, it isn't. Okay. No, it depends on what you're studying. Or lack of confidence will cause you to unnecessarily read and repeat which things that waste time. Okay. So please don't fall into the lack of confidence area. Okay. So if you're reading something, you know, question one, you got it right. You read it again. Oh, you got it right. You, do you know why you're reading it for the third time? Let's not fool ourselves. Why do you think you're reading it here for a third time? It's not because you need to review it. It's because it makes you feel good. Okay. You want to approve on yourself. And what you do is you want to read the things you know so that you feel like, look, I know stuff. I, I know stuff. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You're fooling yourself. You're wasting time. Don't be afraid to challenge and go to the things you don't know and only make make it that that what is your studying. Okay. Go to the questions that are cross out the things you know so you don't you don't need to feel good about yourself in a way that you're just answering easy stuff. Go to the hard stuff and make those easy. That's what you need to do. Okay. So how do you manage the confidence? You have to make a decision on when to be confident. Okay. Here's a really good trick. If you read pathology this week, let's say you have card pathology. Let's say it's, let's say it's from the dental Dex and it's card 42. You read it today. Then after two months, you come back to it. And let's say you set up some evaluating system like questions, right? So two months pass and you get to it again. And you pick it up. Oh, let me see. And you found that you have remembered everything. Check, check, check. Everything is remembered. Okay. Now, here you have to make an executive decision. This means, based on this little clinical anecdotal experiment, that after two months, you will still remember it. And because it's your second time or third time, or it's an additional time of reading, Actually, your memory is going to last longer with it, maybe three months even. Does this make sense? Okay, so you should feel confident. You should be. It's a decision. I'm going to be confident that in two months, because I just tried, right? I tried my shortest time going between this card and this time was two months. And I still remembered it. Now, I could go longer and see the longest time. Sorry, not the shortest. So maybe one day you could try longer. You could go, oh, let me see what happens in three months. Will I still remember it? But at least you know for two months you still remember. So what if the exam is right in, you know, 1.5 months? Okay, that means you don't need to even review this card for the exam because you remembered it after two months. So you should be remembering it within two months, the next two months. That's confidence. That is the decision to be confident and not to waste your time reading something that you already know that you remember. Okay. So it is time to read pathology again. You'll find out what knowledge you remember and what you have forgotten. Okay. So I, already, I just explained this, right? So that is what you need to think about. So the things that you forget, you know, have confidence that you will remember them or a portion of them next time you read. Okay. And don't assume you're going to remember everything. So, don't don't let your confidence shatter just because you don't remember things that's expect to forget during the exam however when you're inside the exam always make the decision that's it you be an actor 
you're confident. Be an actor that is playing a role as a scientist, dentist. That's the best dentist in the world. That's what you have to be. Assume that you have the knowledge to solve all the questions. Okay, that's how you have to think in the exam. Because sometimes questions are masked with different terms and they trick you. But if you go, if you dig into your head, you go like, oh, yeah, yeah. If you think you know it, you will find the answer. And we'll train you during the course on strategies to solve these. Uh, on how you can solve questions without even knowing what the exact answer is sometimes, but you can still solve it. Okay. I tell students before the mocks and before the actual exam, and it's a trick that works with me. In the, in the exam, imagine this scenario. The NDEB has questions and they selected you because they need a dental consultant to help them answer these questions. They selected you because you took the scholar's dental course and you are a scholar, a scientist of dentistry. Here's another scenario. Imagine the world is ended or something, okay? <laughs> the world is destroyed a little bit, okay? And we are trying to rebuild it. You are the only dentist that survived. What well, if you're the only dentist that survived, aren't you going to give the best answer you can that you think is right? If you think with this mentality, you will be have a clear, clear vision when you're when you're a clear uh, mind, that, a thinking mind during the exam. OK, so either of these scenarios will help. The third thing is expectation. So uh, one of the questions in the course, will you follow up with each doctor and can tell him or her if he is ready for the exam? That's unrealistic. So, uh, and it's a good time to ask that question because we're at expectation, right? So <laughs> that's a little bit unrealistic. How are you, how am I going to be able to tell you if you're ready for the exam um, without having any objective information? You have to, the mock exams don't always reveal to you um, how, how much you know. I could tell you if you are doing better than others based on the mock exams. So what we do in the mocks is that we give you, the, we take all the results and we classify you based on a range without putting names, but we classify the range. So we, we put a scale system, um, the people from 65 to 75%, people from 75 to 85, and then from 95. And we show you how many people got here, how many people got here. And then you yourself could look and be, oh, okay, I look like I'm, I'm below average, right? And we'll discuss that with you. But in no way and form um, are we going to be 100% accurate with saying if you are ready or not. That's impossible. There's people, but most of the time I could tell you that your situation is doesn't seem like you're in the best situation to take the exam. For example, we had a student that's, that was under third try and they had a death in the family. They went back home to visit, uh, to visit. I told them that I don't think you should take the exam because you're not in the best mindset. You're, you need that time to review. They did it. They took the exam and they failed. So there's situations that tell us if you're going to do your best or not, but to pass or not, that's, you're, you're, it's a little bit unrealistic, right? We'll tell you that if you, th we think you're, you're doing well or not, like there's no reason it just seems based on your marks that we get in your quizzes and, and your, and your, and your mocks, you're positioning the mock. Okay. Back to expectation. So you want to have high hopes, but be prepared for realistic results. And this will help you a lot in the exam. So if you see a new question in the exam that's disturbing you or a difficult question or something you never heard of, sometimes some students just, you know, they break down because of this. They this could break you and cause you to mess up other questions. So we will practice exam strategies during the course. So how do we manage this? First of all, walk into the exam expecting to be confused about 50 questions. Know that there will be questions that we can don't assume you're going to go in there knowing all the questions. That's not a good strategy. You're going to, you're going to set yourself up to be depressed and shocked. So go in there expecting 50 questions. Everybody that I know that got 90 said that they are, were unsure about 50 to 60 questions. I was unsure about 60. I got 91. Ha Dr. Hajar was unsure about, I think, uh, 60 as well, or 50 to 60 and she got 90. So. It's normal. When you see one of these questions, remember, smile and talk to yourself and say, hmm, I'm sure everybody else feels the same way, not just me. This is a hard question, not just for me, for everybody else. And just continue, circle the question 
and move on. We'll give you strategies on how to do that in the mocks. And always try to dig into your knowledge to solve the question. Here's a quote I read from a book that is, I think, nice as well. Um, whenever I meet people who are afraid to try something new, in most cases, the reason lies in their fear of being disappointed. So if you go into the exam thinking you're going to have 50 to 60 questions, um, you know, not sure of, you won't be disappointed. If you think you're going to go thinking you're going to know all the questions, then you're going to be disappointed and that's going to mess up your thinking. They are afraid they might make a mistake or get rejected. If you are ready to start your journey, I offer you the same words of advice and encouragement that the mentor that was teaching this person offered me, uh, Rich Dad, when I was learning. Be prepared to be disappointed a little bit. It's fine. You could be disappointed that, that okay, not all 100% is going to be there, that you're going to be confident with. That's fine. Okay, the reason there's few self-made rich people is because people can tolerate disappointment. Instead of learning to face disappointment, they spend their lives avoiding it. Only fools expect everything to go the way they want. So going to the exam thinking that, hey, you know, I'm just going to go in there and it's all going to be easy. Do you, you know, like, no, that's not how it's going to happen. Expecting to be disappointed does not mean being passive or a defeated loser. Expecting to be disappointed is a way of mentally and emotionally preparing yourself to be ready for surprises in the exam that you may not want. By being emotionally prepared, you can be calm and dignified when things do not go your way. When you are calm, you think better, right? All right, so manage stress and anxiety as well. Lifestyle is important, sleep, nutrition, exercise, mindfulness, uh, whatever that is, religious or praying or whatever it is for you, but these are also important. We can help, but we can't force you to pass. You are the leader of yourself at the end, right? And we're just here to be part of your success story. And hopefully we see you there. Okay.